Alright, hello, Mr. Nigran here. I don't know if I'm actually being heard in a video. So we will, we will try the new campaign. It's not finished. I have updated this version. I got it two days ago, or three days ago, from Bandy Chieftain as he was known on the War Center, Seredan on, on Discord. I don't know his real name, he's from Romania. He rigged 8% of the models in the mod. And, uh, yeah, he has done some cards too, and uh, did the new faction selection screens for the Dark Iron Dwarves, the Urbatri Trolls, and uh, the King of Stormguard. The rest will need to be made. Okay, he has remade a map. He hasn't made a map from scratch, but he has taken the old map by the Happy Crusader, creator of the original map, and uh, then expanded on it. So he has changed the map to be bigger, uh, using more regions. I believe he used 197 regions, and now we are using 200, I believe. We added three more regions, and uh, we had removed three. Uh, I believe in 2018 we used all of them, and then we removed the made by the Happy Crusader Isle here. It was a wasted slot, and then we removed the uh, Naxra Mast where no one would ever go except the player uh, an ISIL and we removed uh, I believe uh, Fenris ISIL too because no one would go there and the troops would uh, retreat there they would go there if they were defeated and then the, no one else would go there so factions like Lordran would never be destroyed because they had uh, family members there okay so uh, we, d we deleted three areas I believe and now we have replaced them with other areas and uh, or Seridan has and <coughs> we also uh, replaced some areas on the map and made them into others so. ok we will place the goblins, they have the most interesting position there are some issues on this map where you can't uh, you can click on, s on settlements and move troops out you can't move them in because they are placed in a forest this issue has been fixed on the map in a later version that Seridan sent me today. But the problem with using that version is that it hasn't been updated with my latest changes because Seridan uh, based he, he added a map to the October 8, 2024 release and I released another update on October 11 where I added some gameplay changes, changes to recruitment and stats and such and added the hyenas, the scarlet tracking hounds new unit and removed the, I believe, uh, Lich bodyguards to get them into the game because we are at a 500 unit limit. Okay, and then on October 20th I added the troll pikes, but they are not in the campaign because they were bugged and didn't have a unit card, so the unit cards need to be made and uh, they, not, they, they might not be bugged if I use the chaos uh, pikeman animation, but they are bugged with the current animation, shared with the human pikeman. But you have two pike animation. They have two long arms. They stretch a lot. Okay, so uh, what I need to do if I want to use the other map is that I would need to update it again. I spent about one to two hours, maybe three hours, updating this version two, three days ago. But <coughs> if I use the other map, I will need to redo that only to get another uh, uh, download later. Because Seridan is not done, he might have changed the map again, and even if he hasn't, he, he is working on the Frozen Throne campaign right now, and uh, in this version I have here, we did, didn't have the Frozen Throne, we only had the old Frozen Throne campaign, it doesn't work, but if we go to the other version that I have downloaded today, then we have the Frozen Throne campaign, but with characters placed all wrong, and, and uh, a lot of stuff not being done, uh, like moving everyone to the right uh, places and such hasn't been done. Um, and he's finishing off the Frozen Throne campaign, so I, I feel like I'd rather wait on him to, to, to send me the final version of the map, of both maps, and then I update it with my stuff. And then there are a bunch of strat models I want to do. We have the trolls, the money trolls, your bunch of trolls. Frack Trolls and the Drakari Trolls, all of them will need new Strack models. There are a few that will be kept, for example, I believe that uh, 
the, the amount it rolls will keep their general soldier but their skin in use by the Drakkar it rolls the guy and rolls by the Amani and uh, I believe the Amani trolls are a mix between smaller trolls and guy and trolls forest trolls the guy and ones are half the roster and then there are smaller trolls the other half while the Drakkar trolls are just guy and ice trolls and uh, the strat models the general captain is uh, they are Amani elite troops but uh, they are used as the Drakari strat generals too with different skins and instead of using different skins I want to remake the Drakari general and captain to be unique using one of their units instead so we will remake the general and captain for the Drakari and then when it comes to the agents we will have completely new agents for the Drakari trolls while uh, if they are smaller trolls they will either be used by the Faraki or the Gurbashi and if they are guy and trolls they will be used by the Amani and then we will redo all the trolls with the Drakari trolls and we will redo one of these so one of them, the Faraki trolls, the desert trolls of Kalimdor and the Gurbashi troll tribe, the, the jungle trolls of Eastern Kingdoms they have uh, smaller troll units only and they share strat models currently with different skins and I want them to be unique so one of the factions will keep the old strat models the agents and such and then the other one will get new they believe that all the trolls share the guy and the trolls as generals and captains but have uh, smaller trolls as agents so we will of course change the Drakari trolls to only use guy and trolls from their roster the money trolls might have a mix and uh, if you use any smaller troll for the Amani, it will be shared with the Gurbashi. They have the same units when it comes to the smaller units. Half the Gurbashi roster is also available to the Amani, but they have different skins. So they will share. The Frak will have new ones. They believe there are some Frak strat models that I want to keep for them. So then we do new ones for the Gurbashi instead. But you'll see. I will remake the trolls to make all, all four use uh, unique. Models. I don't want them to share using skins, I, I want them to be unique. And then for the humans, I had finished the agents for the Kingdom of Sto Lordaeron, Kingdom of Stormwind, Human Expedition of Terramor, and Kingdom of Lo uh, Stromgard, and for the Scarlet Crusade of the Frozen Throne campaign. And uh, I, I had also done the heroes of the Th Terramor faction and Lordaeron, Prince Artis and and uh, Yaina, generic ones. I did one hero for St Stormwind as of yet, Valira, and Winner, the Blood Elf female. We still need to do the heroes, like uh, the, the main heroes, the King Varian, Rin, and some others. So we'll do some heroes for the King of Stormwind. And then for uh, Stormguard, we will re remake the currently using the diplomat model, the female footman model without a sword as the threat model for I believe uh, Amren of Arator and Niles of Stromgard, the two female generals of Stromgard. We will still use that model but we will remake it to have a shield and sword, at least a sword, but probably both a shield and sword you'll see. So we will remake them to use a shield and sword or a sword only. Uh, instead of being unarmed like a diplomat and um, then we might remake uh, or make more generals for the other heroes of the faction for the Skull Crusade I also plan to remake some uh, strat models uh, or at least add some new ones for some of the heroes so, so we'll do more uh, strat models for Stormwind, Stormguard and the Skull Crusade as well as for all the trolls and then Ankirai, this faction insect faction they might get new strat models or we'll keep the old ones so we'll see i believe they have the same one now in use by all their agents and generals and such but with different skins we might want more unique creatures you'll see or we we'll keep the old ones uh, and uh, as for the goblins i had wanted a female assassin but it was bugged so i didn't use it in the end i kept the one that Zeldan uh, had made back in 2018 mail uh, okay and then we have the dark horde and the horde they need their heroes for example dark horde leads uh, black hand and 
the Black Hand model and uh, the Orgrim Doomhammer model. They will be used by Ren, Ren and the other heroes. I believe Gildan will be used by Necro Skullcrusher. So we'll use those heroes from Warcraft 1, the models for them. We have the models for them as, as the models for um, Warcraft 3. All who ordered Dark Horde heroes. Uh, they are already in use since the release in 2018 in battle, but they are not in use on the map, so we'll add the strat models and we might also remake some of the agents. Same with the Horde, we'll add Gromash Hellscream and uh, Killrog Deadeye and, uh, and uh, I believe Volgin. Uh, no, Volgin. Yeah, I think Volgin is the name of the hero. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <coughs> we will add uh, some Ethereal General on the map and uh, the Orc Generals and we might also add uh, Tauren Generals for the Horde and then maybe add uh, Troll Batrider Spy originally I planned to add Troll Batriders to the Horde and the Dark Horde as their Spy but probably and Frere with the Trolls as well but uh, with different skins but problem is it's been a while since 2021 when I did, uh, I believe I had to do first the mount and then I had to do the rider and then I had to combine them and it was more complicated than doing a, a dismounted unit, you know, when you want uh, a unit that rides something, like the Night Elven General is a huntress riding a panther or we have Scenarius and Remulus, the Keeper of the Grove Generals, they are Kentaurs essentially we have dryads, they were more difficult to do, especially the, the dryads and the, the, the keepers of the grove. And we also did the pit lords, the Venom Legion, uh, because I had to make them look good with the body to fit exactly with the, the lower body, which is the mount. Uh, the others weren't as difficult, the, the panthers, because there I could just place them on the panther, they didn't need to fit perfectly with the stomach. Uh, but anyway. It's been a while since I did such a unit, so we'll see if I'll bother to do that. But we'll certainly do more strat models for the trolls, the dark horde, and the horde, and the storm guard, and the storm wind, and uh, I believe the scarlet crusade, and uh, possibly the anti faction, and the death, the Rikel. I don't think we'll touch them. The dark iron dwarves. They will get the, the sorceress will be remade. The sorceress priest, the warlock priest, female. So to have a staff. I, I made one without the staff because it was less work required. But we will remake it with the staff. And then uh, uh, I believe that we will not touch the kingdom of Asil Narub. And uh, because they are spiders, they are annoying to do. And that's probably it. We couldn't do the goblins. Uh, but Seridan had already made the goblins red models, but they wanted to make a female assassin instead of a male, but they were smaller than the dwarves and uh, they're bugged out because they didn't fit the skeleton. The skeleton is a normal human and uh, when I tried to in increase the size of the model it broke. Uh, well, the dwarves were fine even though they were slightly smaller than the skeleton, but they still looked good, but the goblins they didn't look good, they were too small. So I count to smaller strat models, and in Hyrule I could solve it by simply making the, the, the model of, for example, like a Kiri Child of the Forest, making that model as big as, as a normal adult, essentially, then it looked good. Same with uh, the Queen of the Fairies, she is very small, or Prince Rallis of the Lanier province, they are also very small. So, so the, by making them the same size as a human, it worked fine. But for some reason, with the goblins of this mod, they they broke in the 3D MS 3D file. It, it just broke the model, so I couldn't stretch it out at all. So I had to give up the idea. Otherwise, I wanted a female uh, assassin instead. Would have fit better because I had added uh, female assassins to many factions. For example, the Stormwind assassin is a female marine. The Blood Elf and High Elf Assassin is uh, the Bloodshade female with two green knives and then the Forsaken is a uh, Dark Ranger female and uh, uh, 
Crusader Crusaders, the Grand Scarlet Crusader, female assassin, the Bunny Legion has the Succubus, Succubus, uh, female assassin, and uh, the humans, I said, the Scarlet Crusade. Yeah, then we have some that are water elementals and uh, I believe flying engines and such that are not females, but any humanoid I tried to make a female and Unfortunately, we couldn't do it with, with the goblins as planned. The trolls do not have females except the Farag trolls. That's why I want uh, probably to keep most of the models that are already here for the Gurbash trolls and make new ones using the Farag trolls. Then we can have some female stride models for the Farag. But the females of the Farag could easily be made into Gurbash troll units too if we had skins for them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's an option too. Anyway, uh, let's play a bit. I wanted to try out the C recorder. I had problems with uh, recording since I installed uh, Palworld and uh, reverted uh, my graphics driver to make it work. It worked, but then the Shadowplay recorder that I always used to, to record the last two years and many years before that, between 2013 and probably 20. 20 or something I used uh, the shadow play recorder it was very good you could record games like Diablo 2 that uh, this recorder can't record and Bandicam can't record it either but it stopped to work and I uninstalled all my graphical drivers thinking I could reinstall them and get the shadow player back working but then instead the launch of the Nvidia launcher the Nvidia launcher it uh, tried to go for the Windows 10 latest update and it can't be installed on my computer which is a Windows 7 so then I ended up with uh, an old version of, of the video uh, launch that isn't uh, that doesn't support the shadow play recorder they needed a more modern one but I couldn't up the update because uh, Windows 7 is no longer supported and it tries to download Windows 10 updates it's really stupid and then uh, I tried going to the home page, but uh, most of the downloads there. Uh, the problem is you need to specify what you have, then they uh, point you at one version that uh, they think that you need, so uh, most of the downloads I downloaded didn't work. They would just cancel in the middle of the download. I managed to get uh, three updates or so, so I had a CD that installed the 2013 version of the NVIDIA launcher. The one that came with my graphics card from 2013, I believe it's from uh, May 2013, I bought it in September or October 2013 when my old graphics card broke down because I wasn't uh, careful enough with the computer. It was one of the best graphics cards back then, so the graphics are pretty good, but anyway, uh, still, but anyway, uh, that version of NVIDIA Shadow... Uh, Nvidia Shadow Play doesn't work on that version. It worked back in 2013, but now it doesn't. And I found some updates. So I managed to update it uh, with the 2014 and 2015 releases, maybe even 2016, but it's still not enough. Uh, before I uninstalled my drivers, I had a 2021 release from September 2021. That's the latest one. Whenever I try to download 2021, and the 18 SCG releases they failed to install. So the problem is I need uh, to get them in order and there is no list with all the releases. I believe that the NVIDIA page, web page, has the NVIDIA site, has all the versions, but you can't select them in a list. Instead you need to pinpoint to the specific one that you need and uh, I don't know what I need, uh, it's uh, very easy to download the wrong one. And and miss, uh, miss out on the ones that you need so I failed to get any, anything later than 2015 or 2016 and I need the 2021 version for a video shadow play to work but I still had Bandicam and it worked when I played uh, Star Wars Total Republic a game from 2011 it also worked with uh, Perfect Dark the fan made uh, like uh, PC remake but it fails to work it Medieval 2 and its mods. I tried with window mode and, and uh, non window and, and, and uh, uh, it only records 2 seconds. The rest of my videos weren't recorded. But when I use C recorder, like I'm doing now, then it works. I don't know if 
if my speaking is recorded, I should probably stop recording now and see if it works. But uh, anyway, uh, if it works, then I can play. But this is just a play test because uh, there are some areas on the map that we can't. Uh, we can click on the banner and can move things out, but we cannot actually select the area with our troops. It might actually make the game unplayable in certain areas. Uh, if I use the more recent map, I will need to update it uh, only for Seredan to send me something new uh, later this weekend, so it's not worth it, but otherwise that map has fixed all the issues with clicking on settlements and such. Fixed other issues too. But yeah, we, we, we don't want to do any such things, any modding before we get the, 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 the final so to say version by certain. Okay. But uh, yeah, we will play test a bit. Uh, but I will end the recording here. Thank you for listening to this. I think this will be a video on its own and then we will uh, start the next video when we start the actual campaign. Then we will play as goblins and just play some for fun on the new map but it won't really count as a let's play because we're gonna cancel it whenever I get the finished maps because I will have to update that version the same changes I did here and then I will keep many fees changes too of course uh, most of them actually but I will still update this uh, his version with, with the hyenas and the, and the troll pikemen and uh, any recruitment changes like the troll regional recruitment uh, improvements to the burning legion recruitment and uh, the improvements to the trade collision recruitment and the human recruitment and improvements to stats of certain unit costs of certain units yeah, there are some things and there may be the, the improvement I did to Terramore where I gave them a city at the start in the Red of Case campaign instead of a large town like they have in this version. Um, because a large town is too weak, the Horde has a large city. It matters, they get wrecked too early. And then, uh, I believe that, uh, yeah, there might be some minor things we can change. For example, the trade collision would not have any allies because we wanted the AI to be more aggressive. Uh, and in his version, they have uh, Undermine, uh, Bandico, and Booty Bay at the start. But in this version, they only have Undermine. But that's more fun as the player. It's just that we, they did nothing or took only Zelda Serve and when, when they were controlled by the AI, so we needed to give them more areas. And then Seredan gave them Booty Bay and Bandico, then they took Moonbrook, so they were better. But they still, and they take Sildasar too, but they, did, they still didn't take Telebeam, so they do not go to Kalimdor, unfortunately, which is a problem. But they do go to East Kingdoms and take stuff from Stormwind or the Rebels or the Trolls, so that's good. Okay, so we, we want to try to play a bit, but this is not a let's play, as we will replace this version with a later one very soon. And uh, whenever I've updated his version, I could probably send it to Cine to the war if he wants to play it, but uh, otherwise I think it won't be released. I think we will want to do the strat model update too before we release it, meaning that the release will be in the late November, I think, if we have to do the strat models. If we don't have to do the strat models, if I skip that and just release the map with the gameplay then, Probably it would be ready already next week, but if, if we want to add all the strap models before we release it, the, then it will probably be the later half of uh, November. Okay, thank you for watching, and we will start another video with actual play. Playing. We are also using the old version from 2020 of the M2 TV EUP tool, the Breval Tool to the War Engine Oral Project tool because the modern version from 2023, the 3.3.0 version uh, didn't have the creature fix, which means that uh, dogs and giants crashes all the time uh, in campaign battles at least and uh, quite often in custom battles too, but not as often and uh, that wasn't a good thing, so yeah, I needed to update the current release with the old version of the tool because the new version of the tool didn't fix the giants uh, I believe that Seredan is fixing the guidance by doing some edits to, the, to each model 
to see if he will succeed with that. He did one guy and last year we succeeded for Great City of War. He sent him the mice, the unit that was and, uh, in use by Haru to the war guy and he fixed that one so <coughs> I think he can just look at that and then compare it with the other ones and then fix them too. I believe it's a name change of one of the bones. It could be more than that, I don't know. Uh, I know that there are five elephants in Faerun and 37 or 27, I think it was 37, but it could be 27, uh, giants in War to War. And then there were 42 or 47 or 49 uh, Hyrule to War giants. I sent all of them, but we'll see if he'll do <laughs> all of them. I don't know about that. But he will certainly do, I believe, the Faerun ones, the five Faerun ones, because. Um, he wanted to help with Faerun and uh, he will do the Warcraft ones because he wants to be able to use the latest version of the empty WP tool and he can only use it if if the guides are fixed first because it doesn't have the creature fix of the 2020 version, we need that uh, and uh, if he fixes the guides then we don't need the 2020 version anymore and can go to the 2023 version or go back to the execu executable.bat file which will work then still works now but if you use uh, if you use the 2023 version of the tool or the executable.bat file th then the guy and the dogs will crash currently but if he fixes the guy and the dogs by editing them changing the name of one of the bones or something then then all of a sudden we can use the modern version of the tool or the executable.bat file and uh, the guy and the dogs will no longer crash so that's what he's gonna do after he had finished the uh, Frozen Throne campaign during the weekend and uh, yeah so that's uh, what we have uh, to look forward to and uh, yeah uh, we will most likely uh, re return the executable to the file because it works on any computer but we'll also probably keep the, the latest version of the tool if the guides are fixed but as long as the guides are not fixed we will have to use the 2020 version of the tool which doesn't work on every computer, it doesn't work on my Windows 7 laptop for example and uh, some others have had tr trouble running it and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it has some bugs too, like uh, ca dead uh, horse cavalry end up uh, laying in the air and uh, when they turn around th there's a slow animation so the rider turn around after the horse, it looks very bad and, and then the worst uh, issues is that uh, the riders of elephants and chariots are invisible um, yeah so yeah we, we want this issue fixed for all three mods Harul, Classic Ultimate, Warcraft and Faerun but uh, I am only certain he will fix them for um, Warcraft and probably Faerun we'll see if he will uh, do the Hyrule once I sent them to but they are quite many so I don't know well, right. uh, but if he fixes them for Hyrule that means I won't need to use the tool anymore for Hyrule, so we could uh, could finally play Hyrule Total or Classic Ultimate without the tool. We can use the AUI.bat file instead. But if we use uh, if, if that works, that means that uh, the Giants will work, like the King Gan and others will work, and at the same time the Chariots of Icana and and. Uh, Gunner posts of Labrina, the Kukiri barricades of the Kukiri and the Gorum BAM platforms, they will have visible riders because uh, the Gorum bat pla platform, BAM platforms and uh, the, the Gunner posts and the Kukiri barricades, they are um, chariots or based on chariots, so they have invisible riders. It looks really bad and then you can see the barricades, but you cannot see the riders and uh, you can see the bullets flying, but you cannot see the actual gunners or um, Archers, etc. So yeah, if, if the guidance are fixed, we do not need to use the 2020 version of M2 TV EOP. And if we do not use that, we don't we won't have the bug with the invisible riders and the bugged cavalry and they die and turn around. So yeah, we really need the fixed guidance. And hopefully they will be fixed for all three mods, but at the very least Faerun and Warcraft because uh, Bant or Zerdan is one of the original models of Warcraft Total War, so he he is gonna do the Warcraft Total War ones and 
uh, Faerun, he wanted to do stuff for Faerun, so I'm pretty sure he will do that too, but uh, Hyrule, he has done a few things for Hyrule because I asked, but he do not have any interest for Hyrule to do more, so, so I don't know for certain if he will do the Hyrule ones, I just sent them in the hope he will do them, so we'll see, but thank you for watching, bye. Hello, Mr. Nigren here. Welcome back to Warcraft of the War. This is a VIP, a work in progress, with a new map. We are not gonna play an entire campaign because this version is gonna be re uh, replaced very soon. I will probably get a more finished version with a more finished map for both campaigns. The Reign of Chaos Warcraft 3 campaign and the Frozen Throne Warcraft 3 expansion pack campaign. Uh, we will get finished version of the maps for both campaigns probably um, on Sunday so uh, yeah we'll just play test a bit as the goblins the trade coalition uh, but um, yeah I checked the video and uh, it worked to record and uh, my voice was recorded perfect I don't know about the quality I think that it looks good enough on the map but I don't know about battles if they will lag or if, if it will be slower than normal. I, I used Shadow Play in the past and it worked perfectly and then I have used Bandicam 2 in the past and it also worked perfectly until my drivers become, became outdated. So now Shadow Play do not work and Bandicam works for some games but not Devil 2. Every time I try to use it we only record two seconds and the rest of my video is not recorded. So obviously I don't want to record when, when I lose everything but two seconds. But with the C recorder CD recorder or whatever that I'm using right now it works. I don't know if it will be laggy or uh, slower when we play the video. But I believe that when I play the game I do not feel any lag or slow. slow. Uh, it's not slow but I believe um, it may cause slight lag because uh, I believe the Nvidia Shadow Play recorder do not cause any lag in any game when you record. It records the screen but this recorder records the game in a way that it might actually cause it to be a little bit more laggy, but I don't know. Uh, we will try and see if the videos will lag or not. I haven't used this recorder before in Medieval 2, or at least not in many years, so we'll see. The, the good thing with this one is that it works with my outdated drivers, and I can speak to them. Okay, let's start the campaign. By the way, the Trade Collision Goblins. Who are they? Uh, so we are on the Reign of Chaos campaign, 616 of the Dark Portal. Dark Portal opened in Warcraft 1, we are in Warcraft 3. Uh, the Trade Coalition is the Goblins Merchant Empire and is ruled by uh, all five of Undermine's Trade Princes, even though most of the Trade Princes are now uh, independent rebels. For example, the Trade Prince in uh, Venture Bay in Northrend is a rebel, and uh, the Trade Princes in Kalimdor are rebel. The one in uh, Everlook next to the Night Elves and the one in Ratchet next to the Horde and the one in uh, Gadgetsan next to the Farak Trolls and the one in Mudsprocket next to Terramor. They are all rebels. And then uh, Booty Bay I believe uh, is a rebel settlement in this version but in the release they will have that from the start and they will also have uh, Bandit Co. An area th that they didn't have in lore but it's an area held by Stormwind rebels or bandits and uh, because the bandits are part of the trade coalition faction we figured that they could start with it because they have those units in, in their arm anyway so that means they have a land bridge between Undermine and Boot Bay uh, which allows them to be active in Eastern Kingdoms they will also probably take yes the AI takes Uldazar the Sandlari troll capital which is a rebel area because the Sandlari are not faction in this version at least, we might, they might be added later. Anyway, but uh, sadly they do not take Tel Aviv, another troll area on an ISO, a jungle troll area, and they need to take that to then take uh, Lost Trigger Co, which is a bandit area, and uh, after they take that area they would then take Gadgetan, but sadly they do not take Tel Aviv as the AI, so they are only active um, in the Eastern Kingdoms, but as we are going to place them we can be active on both fronts. Okay. Uh, so the Trade Coalition is the Goblin's Merchant Empire and is ruled by all five of Undermine's Trade Princes but we are only controlling two of them, the Heir and the Leader, the rest are rebel in 
this campaign in the old version with the old map, I believe we controlled all, all five in every area. We didn't want them to be spread out. We all originally wanted them to only have undermine, but they did so poorly as the AI that we needed to uh, give them two additional areas uh, to make them do anything in the campaign. We don't want them to just sit and do nothing either. Okay, uh, so um, it, it is huge, far-reaching and massively complicated commands the trade fleets so the trade coalition has the largest fleet but we have removed most of the fleets we only kept one of the many fleets uh, the trade coalition condones smuggling and slavery undermine contains the headquarters of the trade coalition yeah that's still our capital trade coalition has little influence over Ravilgas and indeed the raiders attempt to go under above or around the coalition's head Dublin barons are allegedly there to serve as magistrate over the land and holdings owned by a trade prince. Usually the, the Falcons do better as the EA when they have uh, one area where they start. So that's why we decided to limit them down, but they still did, didn't do any good because they were on ISIL even when we had the ability to move from one ISIL to another. They still only took like one area and did nothing. But um, I have improved their garrison now. So they, they have better garrisons. After I approved the garrisons, they took Suldasar. Before they had the old garrisons, they didn't take Suldasar. But Seredan uh, on his version has also given them Bandit Co. and Woody Bay. And uh, after he did that, they started to take Moonbrook and other areas in Stormwind or in, in the jungles of the Gurubashi. Still do not take Tel Aviv, so they won't go to Kalimdor, which is a problem. Uh, okay. Uh, so, the. F uh, the Gablin barons are allegedly there to serve as magistrate of the land and holdings owned by a trade prince. The five more or less trade princes collectively control the trade coalition and by undermines trade princes the trade coalition controls much of their commerce throughout the world. Trade prince Steamwheel, the richest known goblin on Azeroth, runs the shipping division practically on his own. Ratchet is the chaotic urban center of the empire of the trade princes, Steamwheel Cartel. Prior to the First War, goblins of the Steam Beetle Cartel managed to drive out the trolls from a small port town inhabited by humans, which had been overrun. They claimed control of the immediate area and the shores of the Co for their new center of, for operations in the Eastern Kingdom's Put Bay. During the war, the goblins witnessed the Old Horde's arrival and the conquest of Stormwind. With more conflicts in the horizon, they were determined to profit from it. Trade Prince Steam Beetle allied his cartel with Orgrim Doomhammer's horde and offered aid in the form of a new technology. Orgrim Doomhammer was the, the leader of the old horde of the, of the Dark Horde in this mod in, during Warcraft 1. Uh, I believe Blackhand was also one of their leaders. I think Orgrim Doomhammer killed uh, Blackhand at the end of the first game and became the leader, or it was the opposite that Blackhand killed Orgrim and uh, became the leader. So one of them was leader during Warcraft 2 and the other one during Warcraft 1 in the end. Okay, uh, uh, the term and the profit made the trade prince Steamwheel allied his cartel with Orgrim Doomhammer's horde, the dark horde in this mod, and offered aid in form of a new technology, maps and other useful information to the orcs for the right price. Orgrim treated his new allies as equals and paid them gold from Stormwind's coffers. The war chief also hired them to oversee the construction of the Horde's fleet. The cartel also sold them the employees of their alchemists, sappers and zeppelins. So we have no zeppelins in the game. Uh, that's the only thing we are missing here. Also pro providing the watertight pilot tracks for use on the enslaved giant sea turtles uh, also providing the watertight pilot tracks um, for use of the enslaved giant sea turtles oh so the, the goblins had enslaved giant sea turtles ah uh, no the dark horde had giant sea turtles and uh, <coughs> the goblins provided uh, the pilot tracks okay however following the war the steam beetle cartel and other goblins realized that it was uh, 
uh, much better to remain neutral due to driving trades. That means that that not just the Naga but also the, the Dark Horde can use uh, Dragon Turtles actually. One of them, the smaller ones probably then. We have two Dragon Turtles in the game. Maybe the they they use the ships. I don't know. Maybe the bigger one should be used by the Dark Horde or oh, but they fit better with the Naga. Maybe the smaller ones could be used by the Dark Horde. I don't know. Or maybe they could be used by the goblins. You need to read up on that. But it seems that the Dark Horde used the uh, turtles in Warcraft 2. So uh, could be a unit for the Dark Horde or the goblins. Anyway, they do not have any pilot areas. So maybe not. Or maybe it can be used as uh, the, the giant one, but with added orcs on top of, of them. It's like the Kudo beasts, but they are they are riding uh, turtles instead. That could probably be done. Okay. Approximately four years after the second war, the goblin city of Gadgetsan had already been built in Tanaris and Kalimdor. Uh, as it was visited by Graydon Thorn. The Imperial Cartel is one of the largest and most successful of the Goblin Cartels in the Undermine. It is a neutral organization that controls several cities and towns around the world. It has allied themselves with a number of other groups such as the Blackwater Raiders in Booty Bay. So yeah, we will start with the Undermine area on the Booty Bay. and They will also hold the Bandit Co. because it's in the middle. The Steam Wheel Cartel has made a great deal of profit from maintaining neutrality in the conflict between the Horde and the Alliance. The services are always available to the highest bidder, employing anyone regardless of their affiliation if they can produce results. Uh, we can play short campaign, long campaign. In the long campaign we need all 50 regions, eliminate factions, the Faraki Troll Tribe, the Gurbash Troll Tribe or Ankara Disabilities Forms, all of which are in uh, both campaigns. Faraki Troll Tribe is the, the Trolls of Kalimdor. Gurbash Troll Tribe is the, the for, uh, Jungle Trolls of the Kingdoms. And Ankara is it is forms. They are like uh, Starship Troopers style insects. Or Zerg from Starcraft uh, style insects. Swarm faction. Uh, on uh, the short campaign you need to hold 30 regions instead of 50. Eliminate factions the Faraki Troll Tribe and the Gurbash Troll Tribe. We do not need to kill off Ankara if we play the short one. We'll, I think we'll go for... Uh, I kind of want to uh, kind of want to do the short one. Um, strength has a strong mix of elite range and mechanized units. They are really good uh, range units in the late game, like really powerful mages and gu warlocks and gunners. And, and then they have really good uh, mechanized units like a um, guy and warform, mech, and, um, and others. Yeah, those are good. Uh, but in the b early game, they are really bad infantry. And uh, okay, cavalry. Yeah, I mean, okay, archers. Then they get gunners that are pretty good, and then they get really OP range units. So the, the range units is their strength, and the mechanized infantry is their strength too, including a, an elephant unit, a giant. But their weakness is actually cavalry. They have really bad cavalry. They have um, light cavalry that is human cavalry, but uh, weaker than storm and light cavalry, and then. And they have some range cavalry units like rockets and um, trike bikes, where, but they are ranged. One is a bike unit where they shoot from pistols, and the other one is a rocket unit where they throw um, like the dynamites. And uh, they are good from afar, but have low ammo, at least the rockets, and uh, they are very fast, but they are not good in melee. So they have no good uh, heavy cavalry. They have no heavy cavalry except the giant unit. So cavalry is their weakness, and um, the other weakness is um, the infantry in the early game. They really suck. Okay, uh, so no notable unit is the shredder. It's a mech unit, but it's not the giant. But they are still pretty good. They are like the gnome mech warriors, but goblins instead. Similar unit with goblins uh, on max. Few numbers spread out. They used to be spread out and now they have one area here. And in the next release they will have three areas but they are not spread out. They are next to each other. 
Uh, so the spread out thing has been removed. We will have to change this, this text, but there are still few numbers and in need of marginaries. There are a lot of marginaries all over the map. I added marginaries in, in June, I believe, this year to every single area on the campaign map, but the old map, but they st it still works on this map because it's the same map but improved uh, so and made bigger. And um, the, the, the marginaries are based on religion, so factions that share religion, such as the goblins here and the dark horde and the horde, they share marginaries. So if you play as the goblins, you get certain marginaries from different areas. And if you play a different uh, faction of a different religion, you get other marginaries that, uh, yeah, they are unique to religions. So you will have a different experience with marginaries based on what faction you play. But if you play as uh, the goblins or the horde, for example, you get the same marginaries. Uh, but there might be some uh, smaller differences between the horde, the dark horde, and the trade collision. Like for example, the horde has uh, some ogre marginaries available in Calibdor, while the dark horde might have uh, other marginaries available. Okay, but most of them are shared. Okay, yeah, but I don't believe that the Dark Horde has the ogres in Kalimdor, so that's the difference, for example, between the Horde and the Dark Horde. Uh, but most of them will be shared, and if you play a completely different faction with a completely different religion, they will have completely different marginaries. Okay, uh, let's start the game. This recorder will crash. Uh, for example, in if I use the Shadow Player recorder, it records the screen, not the game. So, so whenever a rule to the board crashed after a battle, it could happen. Sometimes I played for five hours and it didn't crash, and other times uh, I played for nine hours and it didn't crash, and then other times I played for a half an hour and it crashed after a battle. Uh, and if that happens when I played on Shadow Play recorder, I could just start it up again and continue and. Uh, crash and uh, the desktop would be recorded so it weren't affected by the crash but if I instead used the bandicam recorder then I would lose 11 or 12 minutes or so of the recorded material because uh, it would, uh, the, the crash would uh, interrupt the recording program so uh, the problem was that whenever it crashed using bandicam I lost 12 minutes of my recording where I spoke and it was not fun. Uh, and with this recorder I believe it records the game, but it will continue to record the other screens. It won't stop, so I don't believe it will be affected by crashes. This mod will not crash, uh, except maybe in battle if you are unlucky like the Maulox, if they are too numerous, can crash. And maybe the Hyenas and the Felhans and the Snapdragons, maybe if they are not fixed by the tool, I don't know. And then the pirates are demolisher giants of the blood elves can crash, but they do not crash often. For example, if you play without the M2TV UP tool from 2020, then it, they will crash uh, as soon as you zoom in on the units. But if, if you do not, uh, if you play with the tool from 2020 and use the creature fix, then, then you can uh, zoom in on them and they won't crash unless you're unlucky. I believe that they've crashed twice or so when I played, uh, but uh, most of the battles uh, didn't crash, them. other guys have never crashed in using the tool, and um, unlike uh, when I didn't use the tool with the creature fix, then they crashed is essentially just when, uh, as soon as you zoomed in on them. Uh, so we have garrison script, they removed it for 12 class and lord run, uh, because uh, they are supposed to be defeated in the Reign of Chaos campaign. And uh, when they are defeated, uh, the Blood Elves and the Sandorai, and uh, the Blood Elves, also known as the Sandorai, or the Forsaken, will spawn. But if, if they are not defeated, uh, those factions will not spawn. So of course we don't want them to have a garrison script. But everyone else has a garrison script. Okay. Defeat imminent the minor factions. Uh, they have a lot of regions. Let's uh, build some roads. Yeah, the uh, highwayman he 
yeah, they lack a unity of card. But we'll, we'll go for something better. Let's go for the Goblin Alchemists. And we can go for uh, Shredders and Artificers. And uh, we can also send this army. I believe uh, the Sandalari Trolls over here are pretty strong. So you don't want to attack their elite. You would rather attack uh, bandits. One reason why they have a problem moving all the way to this area is because the, the new map is bigger so you can see it takes a long time to move. You might have to increase the movement points. I believe um, I read somewhere that if, if they can move all the way to a settlement they are more likely to move there in one turn. If they can move in one turn to one settlement but we don't want that if it's this far away. You can see here that it's many turns. Each uh, color on this line is a turn. So yeah, it will take many turns to go there. You see the green one is one turn, red one is two turns, blue one three yellow four, pink five, light blue six, and white uh, seven. So it takes seven turns. At least I think we can uh, improve the, the, the movement points so it won't take that long. The problem is that some other settlements are very close uh, to each other, which means that it's, uh, they already can probably reach, reach it in one or two turns increase it they will be able to move very uh, a lot here but it's needed for the eyes yes but uh, we will have to see if you want to improve it yeah it takes a long time for them to move currently on this map you can leave the unit of uh, goblin brassiers We also have uh, Marginaries, I forgot. We have the Pirate Musketeer Marginaries. Goblin Rabble, they suck, but their numbers. The Goblin Bombards, Orc Necrolites, they were outlawed by the Horde. That's why they are available to the Trade Coalition, which is like a criminal organization, but they can also be hired by the Horde or the Dark Horde as uh, Marginaries. It's up to the player or the AI. They want to break the law, but, uh, but they are not available as regular units for the goblins, and they are not available as regular units for the horde. Uh, but they are available as regular units for the dark horde. I saw too uh, that they had a green skin for the dark horde, so but they have a dark horde skin here. So they need to fix the skin on the later version of the mod. They have the wrong skin here. They have the horde skin. They should have the dark horde skin like in this picture. And then uh, I believe that the captain of the dark horde had the ordinary horde uh, skin. So we need to change it to the dark horde skin. There are some things to fix. Another issue was that they saw that the fracking trolls couldn't recruit the wild raptors. They could recruit them as marginaries in Ungoro, this forest. But they couldn't recruit them from cities. And I had added that feature in, in the latest release, I believe, but it wasn't in this version. And I took a look at the frack earlier today, so... So yeah, they need the, the raptors from cities. I believe that they are available from castles, too. They start with a very large city. We, we need the, the raptors to be available from cities as well. It's one of their better units. It's similar to the Hydra could be better or worse. I think it's better. Or same, or the same. <coughs> but a cool uh, giant raptor unit. They are not uh, one unit, it's like a couple of raptors, but they are much bigger than the mouse. Like giant raptors will attack their enemies and uh, it's one of their better units, that's why they are needed because the frag trolls are a pretty weak faction, so they need their elites. So it's not good that they can't recruit one of their best units. Okay. <coughs> Let's move out. Hire some mercenaries. We will hire some... Uh, 
I based uh, had seven uh, of each of these markers available because they hold uh, they in the old version they held undermine, they held uh, booty bay over here. They will still hold these two areas, meaning they will still have access to two units of markers, um, and uh, then they will hold uh, bandit co. But it's not the goblin areas. I don't think they will get uh, goblin marks there now. Uh, but uh, they will ha hold the uh, undermine and they will hold uh, boot bay. That's two areas. So that means they should have access to two of their marks instead of seven. I believe the other seven uh, were based on the fact that if they held Gadget Sand, Mud's Procket, and Everlook over here, and uh, Ratchet over here. That's uh, four additional areas in addition to the two I just mentioned. That's six areas. And then they held the Venture Bay over here, placed on this area now. Uh, then they had seven areas and uh, they could get one of the marks from each area. So if, if they recruited uh, all, all of them here, they wouldn't be able to recruit them on the other areas uh, unless they wait for them to replenish. So when you play the fact you had uh, all these cities and you could decide where you wanted to recruit them. You could recruit some here and some in the other areas so you could recruit all of them in one location, like we did here. But now when we do not control the other trade coalition areas, it doesn't make sense for them to have access to more. So uh, I might change that so they only have access to two of each. Uh, which means they will have access to the boot bay ones and, uh, and the undermine ones. But I might still keep the seven because you're, as the player you're supposed to con conquer the other goblin areas and when you have them it makes sense that you can use the uh, arcanize from all, all seven. So I don't know. We might keep it or we might uh, make it two as they started two areas. We'll see. Alright, uh, we can't do anything more this turn, so we will have to end. I also removed their ships. I added them out, I commented them out, because I thought the AI would do better, so we do not have any ships now. Uh, otherwise, we could have moved fast, we could have boarded the uh, ships, and uh, actually, let's, let's build a ship. Then we can move them faster to each area, and invade faster. So the player is better to use the ships. We'll move faster that way. Okay, let's end the turn. Okay, end of turn report. By the way, the new map is very stable. I've play tested already. I play tested for 1400 turns. More than 1400 turns, and it didn't crash once. So it's not unstable. That's good. I hope the final version of the maps will not be unstable. This one wasn't. But it had other issues, like we couldn't select Raven Hill and some other areas like Splinter Tree, Borrelos, uh, Borrelos and uh, some others, uh, Tunkley Village, uh, and some others. Uh, so yeah, it needed to be changed and altered. Okay, so the Scourge or Undead is the strongest military in the world. Uh, the Bang Legion, the Demons, have the best financial situation, the Kingdom of Lordaeron the best the humans they have the best the main humans the strongest human faction in the game the main human faction of World of three and the frozen throne uh, they have uh, the best production and the largest population start with the most areas and overall the scourge or undead 
where most located in northern here, but have some armies here too. One, two areas and many armies. They are the strongest road faction. Uh, yeah, we will have to pause the recording, I think. Because I need to go do some stuff. See you soon.